Hello, welcome to this fourth and hopefully final video looking at max and min values. We want to look at how to find the absolute maximum or the absolute minimum value of a function. We have the extreme value theorem that tells us as long as our function is continuous and we have a closed interval, we know that the function will attain its absolute maximum value and its absolute minimum values for some x that's inside that interval, but how do we find it? It turns out that there's two possible ways that they could occur. It could occur at a critical number who's inside the interval. So you got to go find the critical numbers. Remember, those get found by taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero, or possibly finding where the derivative is undefined at. The other place where you could attain your absolute maximum, your absolute minimum, is at the endpoints. So you're just going to make a chart, basically. After you have these candidates, you're going to make a chart and then you're going to plug them into the function. Look at the y values. Whoever gives you, whoever, ha, you know, whatever the biggest y value is, that's your absolute maximum value. Whatever the biggest, the smallest y value is, that's your absolute minimum value. Let's see an example. This function is a nice simple function x fourth minus 2x squared plus 3, and the interval that we're interested in is negative 2 to 3. It's a polynomial, it's continuous everywhere especially on that interval extreme value theorem says someplace in that interval or on the endpoints your function will obtain its absolute maximum value and its absolute minimum value so let's go and take that function's derivative 4x cubed minus 4x it's defined everywhere it's it, the derivative is a polynomial so you don't have to worry about trying to find where your derivative is undefined at and as far as where is it equal to zero at, you see the two terms that they have in common. Uh, the two terms have some one term in common, factor that term out. Because when it's factored and set equal to zero, you can take each one separately and set them equal to zero. Either 4x is equal to zero or x squared minus one is equal to zero. Now remember, that means that x squared isn't just a one, it's a plus or minus one in addition to being zero. So both of these, um, all three of these, sorry, end up inside our interval. If you end up with a critical number who's outside your interval, just throw it out. We, don't, we only care about what's going on inside of our interval, and all three of these are inside. Make a chart, your endpoints, and your three critical numbers, plug them into the function. Okay, I'll do it quickly with you here. Uh, plug a negative 2 in, you end up with 11. Plug a negative 1 in, you end up with 2. Plug a zero in, you end up with three. Plug a one in, you end up adding up the coefficients there, so that's a two. Finally, plug a three in, you're gonna end up with your 81, and then you take away the 18 and add on the three, you have a 66. All right, look down that list. The smallest of those values is two. It occurs twice. I mean, I mean who says that it's only gonna occur once? It could occur more than once. So. Both of those values of two end up, you know, as your, two is your absolute minimum value of your function on that interval, and 66 is your absolute maximum value of your function on that interval. All right, great. Let's look at another example. We have time. Let's do another example. One with some trig in it. Sine of x plus cosine squared on x. Interval zero to pi. Our function is continuous everywhere, especially on the interval from zero to pi. Let's go take its derivative. Trig derivative. Sine's derivative is cosine. When it comes to cosine squared, you got to do a power and a chain. You got to bring the two down in front, take cosine to the one, and then multiply by cosine's derivative, who is negative sine of x. That's how the plus turns to a minus. But once again, this is poly this is uh, nice and trig in nature. There's nothing um, troublesome about plugging any x value in there. It's defined for all x's, so you can't get any critical numbers that way. But just like with the previous example set it equal to zero, factor out what the two terms have in common, if they do have anything in common, and then take those separately and set them equal to zero. Either cosine x is zero, or one minus two sine, score, uh, sine of x is equal to zero. Okay. Um, now we're only interested in zero to pi. Cosine x is equal to zero right in the middle of that at pi over two. And the other one there, we're talking about sine x being equal to a half, and that's going to happen twice. 
That's going to happen at 30 degrees pi over 6, also at 150 degrees 5 pi over 6. All of these are in our interval. Make a chart. Got your endpoints. Got your critical numbers in between. Plug them back into the function. And you'll be able to, uh, back to the original function, the function. Okay. Uh, you plug a 0 in, and you'll get a 1. You plug a pi in, you'll get a 1. You plug pi over 2 in, you'll also get a 1. And so you get 1 happening th three different times in your interval. And then when you plug pi over 6 in, we already know that the sine of that is a half. The cosine of that is root 3 over 2. But when you square it, it becomes 3 quarters. So you got 50 cents, you got 75 cents all together. You got a dollar and a quarter. Five-fourths. The only difference with the 5 pi over 6 is cosine is negative, but that cosine is squared anyway, so you get the same five full quarters. Look down that list of y values. The smallest is 1. It occurs three times. The biggest is five-fourths. It occurs twice. Whatever. It's all good. Your absolute minimum value is 1. Your absolute maximum value is five quarters. All right. Cram two examples in on you. Sorry about that, but I uh, just really wanted to make sure that we um, finish this series. Next up, we'll be looking at how to find local maximum and local minimum values. My name is Akai Rimmer. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, comment down below, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.